St. Francis of Assisi was born into a wealthy family in this picturesque Umbrian town. As a youth, he lived a raucous, party-filled life before acting on his romantic dream of becoming a knight. Knighthood, however, did not suit the future saint. After a series of visions, he renounced all worldly possessions, famously rebuilt the local chapel one stone at a time, and worked selflessly for lepers and others in need. Endorsed by Pope Innocent III, he established the Franciscan order dedicated to the commitment of renunciation and a dedication to those in need. He was the first person in recorded history to receive the stigmata, or five wounds of Christ, considered by many to be the manifestation of the purest level of Christian faith. Francis is perhaps most popularly known for his love of animals and all creation. In the swan song of his life, he sang his Canticle of the Creatures, in which he reveres all aspects of creation as brothers and sisters, and urges love and forgiveness as the path to true peace and joy. My personal favorite story of the patron saint of animals and environment is that of the taming of the wolf. In this painting, I have employed a time-honored compositional technique known as contrajour. Contrajour in French literally means against the day. It is a compositional technique in which the subject matter is dramatically backlit, delivering a mysteriousness to the scene. I have also used the trees to create shafts of light in a more literal representation of the spiritual aspect. While Francis was staying in the town of Gubbio, he learned of a ravenous wolf that was terrorizing the people. After some pets and livestock were killed by the wolf, some villagers resolved to go kill the wolf, only to become the wolf's next victims. Residents became afraid to leave the city walls. Then Francis and a companion went out to meet the town's nemesis against the advice of the villagers. While in the forest, suddenly the wolf, jaws agape, charged them. Francis calmly stood his ground, speaking compassionately to the wolf. Brother Wolf, said Francis, I want to make peace between you and the people of Gubbio. St. Francis learned from the wolf that it had been abandoned by its pack. In its desperation for food, it had ventured into danger but really meant no harm. Then Francis spoke again to the wolf, offering reconciliation. They will harm you no more, and you must no longer harm them. All past crimes are to be forgiven. The wolf agreed. St. Francis returned to Gubbio with the wolf. A stunned crowd watched Francis ask the wolf to make a pledge to do no more harm. In response, the wolf extended its front paw and placed it on the saint's hand. Then St. Francis asked the townspeople to feed the wolf. Transformed by what they saw, they loudly and convincingly agreed. From that day forward, the peace was kept. The wolf lived for two years among the townspeople, livestock, and pets, receiving handouts. The wolf hurt no one, and no one hurt it. When the wolf finally died of old age, the people of Gubbio reverently grieved their loss.